Hey, you're just in time for Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding dreams and visions. I'm Robin Hardin, inviting you to come along on a very special journey with me. Today's program is the first of a series shot on location in Israel. I'll be sharing my pilgrimage to the Holy Land with you. Today, we'll visit Caesarea, Mount Carmel, Megiddo, and Nazareth. We'll sail across the Sea of Galilee and visit ancient synagogues and a theater. Come with me as I walk in the steps of Jesus. I'm at the Switzerland airport. We left yesterday morning from Nashville. We went to New York and now we are here the following morning. It's about 7.30. We're going to take the next leg of our flight and then a couple hours bus drive and we will finally be at our destination. Hallelujah. 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 I was asleep last night when we got here, so I had no idea what was in store. When I woke up this morning, look what I saw. This is the Sea of Galilee. We're staying right on the banks of the Sea of Galilee. Dreamcatcher is coming to you today from Israel. This is Caesarea. Behind me is the theater of Caesarea. It's still active where they have uh, concerts even today. Thank you, Jesus. Come to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Worship and adore you. Thank you. This is not a very engine though. This is 50-50, not so old. But some of the trees here, these are olive trees, and it's olive harvest time, though these olives, usually they wait a little bit longer for first rains, good rains, though we had the first rain already, to pick the olives. This is Mount Carmel for Elijah, no doubt, enjoying some of these same breezes that you see, and you can hear. He obviously ate from the trees, that's what the word says. He drank from the brook, but he also talked to the Lord. What a place to be. Mount Carmel. Behind me is the Tel Magado, and we are getting ready to climb up that mountain. This is what they are speaking about in the Bible when they talk about the battle between Gog and Magog. You can see behind me the excavating is still going on. This is the Valley of Armageddon. We're walking down deep into the ground, into where the water system, this is how they would get the water into the city. Oh, this is awesome. 
think if you get a feel for how tight it is here. It's nice and dark because we're underground. I'm going to see if you can get an idea of how deep. You can see kind of how far so we've come. So the sisters were handmade, come on, right? And we're not down to the bottom yet. We finally got down, but now it's we're walking a real long way through a tunnel trying to get us to the spring where there should be water. All this was done by hand. Finally, behind me is the water. Wave them in. Behind me is the gospel trail. When Jesus left this mountain to go to Nazareth or anywhere, this is how he went, not on a bus. Behind me is the Jezreel Valley. We're on the hills of Nazareth where Jesus played as a child. And as you know, most of his parables had things of nature in it. And this is where he grew up. This was the view that Jesus had when he was a little child. There are angels all around. Let us pray. Hey there! Several months ago, I had a couple dreams about my mom that I had shared with you at our family reunion, and you just really reassured me that God, um, He sees my feelings, He sees my hurts, and He sees the situation. And um, so that gave me some comfort, but since then I've still been praying over her, and I had a dream about her. And in this dream, she's sitting um, in the home that she lives in. She lives in an adult home. And so she's like sitting in the commons area and there's different people around. There's workers around and she's singing and it is like so beautiful. And like, she has this light around her that looks like radiating, like it's an angelic light and it's beautiful. And some people, you know, they don't notice and they're kind of just in their own conversations but one specific person really, really noticed. Several people noticed, but one particular worker just really noticed. And it was just so beautiful. And so that's all that happens in the dream, just listening to her beautiful singing voice. And so when I woke up, I just felt so warm and fuzzy inside. As cheesy as that sounds, that's the best way I know how to describe it. And so after I was thinking about this dream, I was almost relieved because I was like, thank you, God, for giving me something that is really positive in a hard situation. And one thing specifically that he was showing me is that in her life, her disease kind of takes over. Um, it runs her life. It runs the show. And it's the reason why she lives in, adult, in an adult home. But he was showing me that under all of that, she's still a person. She's still beautiful. And that she has gifts and talents. And in her younger years, she used to play piano and she would sing in church. And so I just really, um, I just felt so good. And I just really appreciated that beautiful dream about her. And so I don't know if there's any deeper meaning in that. But I know that that's what I feel like God was showing me through that dream. Thanks. Bye-bye. Alicia, thank you for this dream selfies. I got it just a few days ago, and I'm here in Israel. I'm at the Sea of Galilee, 
And I want to tell you first about the dream about your mother. She's singing because even though people may think that she doesn't know who she is or what she's doing or where she is, perhaps at times, the Lord knows. And he's that special one that sees her. He hears her singing. It's a beautiful sound to him. And he's also got angels encamped around her. This dream also just is a dream to let you see confirmation again of what we've already said to you, that the Lord sees her and loves her and that she's doing really well. She's really at the best place she can be. So I hope you enjoy this beautiful scenery behind me. But more than that, enjoy your mother. Enjoy the time you have with her because God loves her. He has her. That's that glow around her is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thanks for these, Alicia. Over my shoulder, you're looking at Nazareth. Behind me is the Sea of Galilee. We're getting ready to get on a boat and sail the sea to cross the Galilee, the Sea of the Galilee, just like Jesus said. Let's go to the other side. Welcome, friends, to the Sea of Galilee. Now we're going to raise the American flag and we're going to play the national anthem. Yay. the Sea of Galilee, which actually is a lake, but the waves is that of the ocean. So much so that there's a storm on the other side. That's why we had to come in the opposite direction that Jesus actually sailed. But we are sailing on the Sea of Galilee. One time, the mountains behind me were 
occupied by Syria, and they used to stand on the mountains and shoot down to the farmers and to the fishermen here. While well, we're on the bus waiting for everyone to get on, we just got off the boat where we sailed across the Sea of Galilee. I was going to let you know that Israel is one of the leading countries, actually the number one country in recycling the water. Their goal is to recycle 100%, but they're already recycling up to 90 plus percent of their water because it's such a dry land. Between the trees there is a kibbutz called Gadot. One of the famous songs of the Six Day War is called Yelda Begadot. And a little girl from Godot comes out of the shelter and she sees that there are no more houses in the farm. Mommy, she says, we had a greenhouse with a fruit tree and a dad and a doll. The house is gone and dad is gone. Mommy, are you crying or laughing? It's a very famous Israeli song. <laughs> We've just come over the Golden Heights where the uh, even at this time the Iranian troops are 30 minutes from us, boots on the ground. And as we drove over there, the fields on either side of us have fences that say danger minefields. And our tour guide's children are taught not to climb over fences as they play, because when you climb over a fence in Israel, you may be climbing into a minefield. They're hurrying us along. We're going to a spring to fill our water, water bottles up. We just found out we won't be able to fill up our water bottles because there just isn't enough water. That's why water is so important here in Israel. They have to recycle. The, the spring that we thought we were going to be able to fill our water up is very, very low. We're in Caesarea Philippi, and there was a time when it was believed that the woman who touched the hem of the garment that Jesus wore was from this area. Centuries ago, people in this area worshipped a god called Pan. He was half goat and half man, and women were always afraid of him when traveling. When you get really scared and people say you panicked, the word panic came from the fear of the god Pan. It wasn't long ago that this area was occupied by Syria, and behind me is the remains of an old mosque. I'm so excited to share my Israel experience with you. You know, I hate to admit it, but Israel was just never on my bucket list. Most of my travels are as a missionary, so sightseeing isn't something I'm typically interested in. But whether or not it was guilt or obligation that motivated me, I'm so glad I went. We're going to visit Capernaum and even a private olive orchard to taste the harvest. But first, I want to give a shout out to a ministry closer to home that's very near and dear to my heart. Hi, I'm Pastor Brent from Fairview Church, and our church was so excited to adopt the month of December with Joseph's Storehouse. We want to thank you guys, and we want to wish you all. Joseph's Storehouse provides nourishment of body and soul to families in need. Well, they helped me a whole lot, helped me with my groceries. I'm proud to be here. Each month, churches, businesses, and people just like you adopt a month to help distribute food and God's Word to hundreds of hungry families. We've arrived in Capernaum. We're walking about 15 minutes to a church. Underneath the church is believed to be the home where Peter lived. Remember the scripture where Jesus killed Peter's mother, that's where we're going. We're setting in the ancient ruins of a synagogue in Capernaum. In Capernaum. Yeah. When we will come out of the synagogue, you will see that this synagogue was built on top of a synagogue that was built from Brazil. 
So the original synagogue from the time of Jesus is under us somewhere. The people who worshipped here would come into this synagogue and they would walk to the front and then they would turn and face Jerusalem, which is south, and through the doors they could see the Sea of Galilee. Jesus spoke to them at once. It's all right, he said. I am here. Don't be afraid. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you by walking on the water. All right, come. So Peter went over to the side of the boat and walked on the water alone. Coming up a slight hill, we're going to the mountain where Jesus shared the message about the Beatitudes. It was his custom to go into the temple and they gave him a book and he opened the passage where it's found in the book of Isaiah. And he read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he is a and, and And then he closed the book, the Bible says, and the eyes of everybody was upon him. And he said, the mount of where Jesus shared the Sermon of the Beatitudes behind us. Hey there, it's Destiny, and sometimes I wake up with a crazy dream, or sometimes I'm just like, does that even mean anything? And you know what I do? I go ahead and record a dream selfie on my smartphone and I send it to Miss Robin right when it's fresh on my mind or after I've written it down. And Miss Robin will get back with me with an interpretation to my dream and it gives me so much understanding about my own life. It is freaky about how specific that Miss Robin can get into your life simply from you sending her a dream. She has a gift from God that um, can take a dream when God speaks to us and understand the symbolism and let us know what he's saying to us. So I want to encourage you, if you dream at night, don't waste your time. Go ahead and try it. Send Miss Robin a dream selfie and see what she has to say. You will not regret it. Catch some great Z's tonight, guys. Hey, Robin. Thank you so much for all of your dream interpretations and for just imparting wisdom to me and helping me along uh, with all of the dreams that I have. You know I'm a constant dreamer and so I really appreciate you. I love you and I'm so thankful for this ministry. Thanks. Bye-bye. I'm in the part of Israel known as Magda. And you may know, of course, it's known for olives, but also mangoes. And a woman in the Bible that you may have guessed by the name, Mary Magdalene. What a 
a treat this is. We are at the family farm of our tour guide, and uh, he is, her husband, is an olive farmer. And it's sundown, and it happens to be the Sabbath, so the, the uh, harvesters are gone for the day. But this is the harvest season of the olives. Shabbat is just about to happen because the sun is getting ready to go down. And it usually, if you're inside when that happens, you light a candle. And then everyone gets quiet because that's the perfect time for a prayer. The Word tells us to pray for the peace of Israel. But we've been asked by the Jewish people here if we would also please pray for rain because the rain is so scarce here and they're in such need of it. What a special treat. We are about to taste olive oil from our tour guide's orchard that they harvested and pressed themselves. Mm. Mm. That's not the same as what we're used to at home. This olive oil is five days old and it's, um, it's stronger, less mild. Some would say a little bitter, but it tastes like the ground. I love it. Ladies, please, this way. There's a blessing that says, may your sun set around your table as the olive. And that comes from the olive groves, where the small shoots of the new olive trees grow up around the olive tree. Here, though, in the harvesting and the, in the garden, they pull those little shoots because they don't want new trees to grow. But what a beautiful blessing. The little spot you see on my forehead is a very special spot. Pastor anointed me on the hill there with fresh oil, fresh squeeze from an olive. My name is Tiffany, and um, I just wanted to uh, say a little something about the Dream Catcher, Catch Your Dream Journal. Now, before this book, I did used to dream, but it was probably maybe like one dream a week, like one good dream a week that had like substance in it. Well, after I got this book, I was dreaming every single night. This book filled up with my dreams within three months, and I was in need of another book. And so I said to Miss Robin, I said, it's like your books are like a dream catalyst that enables you to just dream more and hear more from the Lord. I needed another book, so I got two so that I can be prepared. I should probably get three. But it's a great book, and you should make sure that you get one. My pilgrimage to Israel will return in a couple weeks, but next week, Bill Woodson returns to the studio. Bill is a joy to watch because of his sense of humor. He shares truth from a different angle, but without compromise. Do yourself a favor. Catch Bill Woodson here next time on Dreamcatcher and catch your dreams.